Hi, I'm Jim Lutis from the Pell Center at Salve Regina University and co-host of Story in the Public Square, which will soon be making its return to the airwaves. I'm joined, as always, by my colleague and co-host, G. Wayne Miller from the Providence Journal. Every December, we name a story of the year, the most important narrative to emerge in public life in the previous 12 months. From international stories to the hashtag narratives of the U.S. presidential election, we had lots of material to consider this year. There's an old saying that truth is the first casualty of war. After careful consideration, we've decided that the 2016 story of the year is truth, the first casualty. Facts and the truth have been under assault in the United States for some time. Decades ago, former New York Senator Daniel Patrick Moynihan famously quipped, quote, everyone is entitled to his own opinion, but not his own facts. Stephen Colbert in 2005 introduced the word truthiness to his audience. But in 2016, the assault on fact and truth has shaped many of our most important public debates. Let's consider where we are. Propaganda generated by a hostile foreign power played an important role in the U.S. presidential campaign. In one notable case, an inaccurate account in one Russian propaganda outlet actually made its way into the stump speech of then-candidate Donald Trump. According to Prop or Not, a propaganda monitoring research effort, more than 200 websites with an audience of 15 million Americans regularly distribute Russian propaganda. Botnets, computers that behave like actual people on social media networks, combined with paid trolls, regularly swayed public opinion in social media. In other words, sometimes things trended because someone wanted them to trend. The consequences of this environment are everywhere. In New York City, half of the respondents to one recent poll did not believe crime statistics that show crime is actually, in truth, down. A fake news story inspired one individual to recently fire an assault rifle in a Washington, D.C. pizza shop because he had read that it was the hub of a human trafficking operation tied to Secretary Hillary Clinton. And police just this month in Santa Maria, California, confirmed that they had deliberately issued a fake news release that falsely claimed identity fraud suspects had been turned over to federal officials. In these and countless other cases, data, facts, and reason did not matter. As Scotty Nell Hughes, a spokesperson for Donald Trump, put it in a recent NPR interview, there, There's no such thing, unfortunately, more a fact. The assault on truth and the avalanche of bogus information are insidious. We live in a media and information-obsessed culture. If the stories about government and leaders, including potential leaders, are constantly filled with lies and fabrications, the ability of actual news to break through is greatly reduced. Many citizens in such an environment will become demoralized and likely too cynical to care about policy. Once a large segment of the population disengages from fact-based politics, it's an easy path to undermining our institutions. In contested battleground states, we've already seen evidence of voter suppression operating in the shadow of the myth of voter fraud. Ultimately, with bad information and compromised institutions, our most basic freedoms are in peril. It is not too difficult to imagine a call to restrict First Amendment rights in the face of so much fake news. In such an environment, citizens must all become savvy consumers of information. For decades, educators have lamented the challenge of teaching critical thinking. In an information-rich environment where truth and falsehoods compete with the same inherent authority, Citizens have to ask hard questions. We have to fact check, and we have to hold people to account. We must master critical thinking as a society, or else we risk major policy and political changes guided by something other than the truth. Thank you for joining us. For more information about the Pell Center or Story in the Public Square, our partnership with the Providence Journal, please visit pellcenter.org.